Good evening, Father's Heart. Good evening, South Africa. Welcome to this call. It is my privilege to share with you tonight. My name is uh, Pastor Daniel van Sel, and um, tonight we have an amazing topic. And um, I look forward to <clears throat> my apology for the frog in the throat. Um, I look forward to sharing with you around this topic tonight. And tonight's topic is our function. And uh, what an amazing topic that is, our function. And um, tonight we talk about the topic, our function, and, and just quickly yourself, by yourself, while we wait for everyone to come online. And thank you to those that already, Irene and Jack, and Tossi, and Barbara, and Flora, and Antonia, Jenna. Um, thank you to, for, for, to everyone interacting with me on social media, on Facebook already. Um, but while we're busy waiting for everyone to just get online, before we start, just as a courtesy to everyone getting online, <clears throat> just for one little moment, think, what is your function? Just for one little moment, what is your function? What do you think is your function in the bigger scheme of thing in the, in the church? What do you think is your function? And thank you to everyone coming online and um, interacting with us telling us where they're watching from. Now, I see Linda Wallace is uh, from Lady Smith. Um, good evening, Helen and Michelle. And um, yes, it's a privilege sharing with you. And, and tonight we talk about our function. And uh, if I say our function, it means your function and my function. Our function collective. Remember, we are the body of Christ. To collective, we are the body of Christ. Whether you like the person or not doesn't matter. Collective, you are with those people around you. Together, collective, we are the body of Christ. And what a blessing that is. To know that it's not just me. To know that it's just not just me that's got to do everything and make sure the gospel is out there. No, we are a body. Every fellow believer is working with you in getting the gospel out there. And uh, that's the beautiful part of this. And um, thank you for everyone. Thank you for every lover of Christ. Thank you for every fellow believer on this call who's busy and out there helping and assisting us to get the word out there. To make sure that people get to know that Jesus Christ has done a complete work for every one of us. But tonight we talk about our function. And uh, before I start, let's just pray together and bless this meeting. Lord, we just come and say thank you for the privilege, for the blessing of us being together with one another on this call tonight. Thank you for the absolute blessing of fellow saints interacting with us digitally. Thank you, Lord, that we can reach people from all over the world, live on this feed, but also on the recording, on the app. Lord, we, we bless every person under the sound of my voice, whether it's live or delayed on the recording. I bless every person. And Lord, we pray in our function. Lord, that we will meditate and spend some time on our function and go see where you will us to be. Lord, because we want to be in your will. Show us, Holy Spirit, help us, reveal to us where you, God, Father, wants us to be. What you will for us. Because if we see that picture, we will live the most fulfilled life ever. We thank you for that. And Holy Spirit, we know that you will take this word and go and run with it in every person at the level that they're at. We thank you for that. We ask that you will be with us in this meeting. Prepare the hearts as we go. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, as I said, um, tonight um, the, we talk about the function or our function. And uh, the key is, we want you to understand what your function is in the body. Because we are a body of Christ and when we talk about the church, we talk about us, every one of us, every fellow believer. It doesn't matter where you are or who you are or how complete you think you are or not. What you think your shortcomings are or not. What you think you can contribute or not. It does not matter. What matters is that you must realize that you are part of the body. Christ is the head. Ephesians 4.15 But speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into Him who is the head, Christ. Now, you and I are part of the body, 
And um, if you just use your body, I mean, I like to use my hands. There's my, my fingers and use, glad that I don't have my toes up here. Um, get my shoes off and put my toes up here. But we have different digits. We have arms, legs, and some of us are more privileged to other, than others. And we have all our digits still. And, um, but we have hearing, we have eyes, we have a lot of different parts that makes up our body. And your whole body functions as a whole. And just like that, you and I, and in understanding our function, in understanding our function, we will make the body function more complete. That should be a aha moment for you. Because in understanding your function in the body, you will make the body complete. Whom of you would want the body of Christ to be complete? Well, then you must play your part. You must play your part. Um, Christians are the body. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 14. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. And how amazing is it? How, how cool is it that God has created heaven and earth with you and I in mind as the different pieces, as the different parts of the body making up the whole. And you know what? The whole of the gospel cannot happen as it's supposed to happen if you and I decide not to make our contribution. No other person can make the contribution that you can make. And, and I, want to, I want to encourage you with a start tonight. I want to encourage you with wanting to listen to the rest. Because this is not a, a negative word. This is an absolutely positive word for you and I tonight. Um, a few things that God won't do. Because remember, we are part of the body and every part of the body has got a function. Your, your legs has got a different function from your arms. Your, your head has got a different function from, um, from your toe. But the key is, you have to control some of that. You have to make some do. I cannot just pray and go lean on a shovel and know that the, a, a hole will appear in the ground. I have to take the shovel and prayerfully dig the hole. Prayerfully dig the hole. Because that is what I should do. If I know that I should dig a hole, I should not go and lean on the shovel and pray that there a, a hole appears. There's some stuff that you and I have to do. And um, there, there's some work that you and I have to do. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9. For we are God's fellow workers... You are God's field. You are God's building. So you and I have a work in this body. Acts, Acts 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The Great Commission. And you and I, Jesus speaking to us, we are the ones that should go and do. But we will receive the power. So there's certain things that, that God wants us, you and I, as part of the body to do. He, he's got us into a function. And every one of us has got a contribution to make. Isn't that good news tonight? That there's a contribution for you to make. There's a contribution for you to make in the body of Christ. God is not nilly-willy just doing everything and there's no place for you to demonstrate His power. Mark 16, 17 And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. And you and I, you and I are part of the body and God has given you in for this specific time. I've heard so many people ask, but why should I have lived through the pandemic? Well, why not? God has got a, has had a plan for you. Has got a plan for you. Is still in the process of a plan for you in this time. And that's why we should be so glad that we're living in this time. And it sounds like a contradiction if I say you should be glad that you live in, in, in a pandemic. Why? Just think of it. In this pandemic, God willed you to live now for you to make your contribution 
in this pandemic. That's much bigger than those who didn't live in the pandemic. We, we always hear when Dr. Frost talks, he say, with, we have the power of the Holy Spirit. And one day when we live out in this world and we live in, with, with Christ in heavenly places, all the old prophets of the Old Testament, Testament will come to us and say, but how was it with the power? Because we have the power all the time. They had the power some of the time. And God has willed you and I to be part of the body in this time. And you and I should take up our sword. We should take up and, and, and find our function. Because if you find your function, you will be a fulfilled person. And you will not be at the end of your rope all, all day, every day. You will not, not, not know what to do. You will not complain all the time that, you know what, it's, it's a pandemic. There's nothing to do. I cannot make a contribution. I'm at the end of my rope. All we need to do is we need to assist you and help you. To go and understand and find your function in the body of Christ. Because the moment that you understand your function, your contribution, planned by God for this time, you will be fulfilled. The body has different parts, thus different functions. We all are not the same. Romans 12, 4. And, and I've spoken about this a little already. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. And you and I, and I can look at names on the, on the chat box, Michelle, Gail, Helen, uh, Monica, Joy, Jenna, Henry. Every one of you are blessed with a different function in the body. How cool is that? Every one of us on the school, every one of you chatting to one another in the chat box at the moment, reaching out to others, has got a different function. Romans 12.4 1 Corinthians 12, verse 15 to 17. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Verse 16. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would have been the smelling? Do you get it? God has made you and I, each one of us, unique with a different gifting and a different function. And all we need to do is we need to go and find those gifts. We need to go find the function. Then we will live a fulfilled life. The Father gifts motivational gifts. Motivational gifts. Some of you are natural motivators. Some of you people gather around and when they leave, they feel as if they, they gain some energy. Supernaturally, people come around you and they leave and they feel as if they received something. Although you just talk normal stuff, just being with you. Because some people have motivational gifts. Romans 12, 6 to 8. Having then gifts differ, differing according to the grace that is given to us. The grace given us different gifts. Let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. A motivational gift. If I prophesy your future, if I prophesy, if I give you a little glimpse of God's view of this bigger picture and not just the one or two puzzle pieces that you currently see in your life. If I can show you a little bigger, how, motiva how much motivation will that be for you? Verse 7. Or ministry. Let us use it in our, in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching. So if you have a gift to minister, if you have a gift to teach, you should go and do that. Find your gift and go and see that as part of your function and go fulfill the function that God has given you with the gifts to go and do. He who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liber liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. And can you hear that, that those are called the motivational gifts? Because if you go and you give in liberality, if you lead, lead with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. And that will motivate people to be like you, to be more Christ-like. It's not about you. It's about Christ. 
And people will want to be more like you. Because for them, you showed them these gifts. But it is more Christ-like and they will become more and more Christ-like. Because it's never about you and I. It's never about us, but it's everything about us. Why? Because as God has given us a function in this time, in this space, in this part of the world. The Son gives fivefold gifts. Ephesians 4 verse 11. And He Himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. And I know everybody wants to be the apostle and everybody wants to be the prophet and the pastor and the teacher. And not everyone wants to be the evangelist. You know what? At heart, I'm actually just an evangelist. I am an evangelist. That's who I am at heart. That's where I'm the happiest. If I can just talk about someone and tell them about the grace of, of the living Christ. The Holy Spirit gives the nine gifts of the Spirit. And you and I... We have to go and find our gifts. We have to go meditate. We have to go spend time with the Holy Spirit prayerfully around these scriptures so that you and I will be able to go find our spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7 to 10. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Hey, fellow believer, fellow believer, fellow follower of Christ, beloved, did you hear what I just said? The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Thank you, everyone, stewarding my gifting in interacting with me. Thank you for everyone on this call. Thank you for every um, believer of Christ that's, that's just pushing me on, showing me grace. For to one is given the word of wisdom. Through the Spirit. To another the word of knowledge. Through the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Can we see these gifts? To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discern, discern, discerning of spirits. To another different kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. And you and I have to go and find which one of these gifts multiples of these gifts are the ones that's naturally part of us the gifts that flow naturally and go and stir those gifts but you see the key is the problem for a lot of believers are but i received the gift i now have to do nothing it's not you have to go and stir these gifts you have to go meditate on them you have to go make sure that you build into them you have to make sure that you go use them and function them so that you can stir yourself up so that you are willing to do a little more. So that you're willing to step out of your comfort zone. To sometimes step out of the boat and walk on the water. To go and help and stir someone else. Because you know what? At this time, there's people around you that need a stirring. And you, if you operate in the gifts that you received. And you find your function in the body. You will contribute in someone's life. At this time, at this, in this specific junction that we're in. There are many other gifts of helps mentioned in the word. 1 Peter 4 verse 9. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. Now you know some people are hospitable naturally. And it is without grumbling. I can be hospitable. But you know what? Sometimes if I see what people do and what they're up to, it's with grumbling. Some people are hospitable and I think, but how can you still stay hospitable after what these people have just done and said? That's just who they are. Go find your function. Which gifts are contributing to your function? We all have gifts, Ephesians 4 verse 8. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. Beloved, Follower of Christ. You and I have gifts. And you know what the good news is tonight? None has received a better gift than you. Not a single person has received a better gift than you. Because there's no gift that's more important than the other. Yes, you heard me right. None of these gifts are more important than the other. Which gift is the most important to you? The one that you freely operate in. The one that you flow in. 
the one that you, when you find yourself, you're flowing in it again. Now, how can we define, how can we find our function? Because it's important that you and I know where and how to find our function. If you under the sound of my voice and you listen to this live or as the recording and you don't know what your function is yet, allow us to help you to go and discover your function. Because if you discover your function, if you can operate with the gifts in your function, you will be an absolutely fulfilled person. And you know, there are people that are mechanics that are totally fulfilled because that's their function. Because they are created to be a mechanic and they do it unto Christ, although they are a mechanic. There are people that are the electrician and they're the electrician for Christ because they're in their function. They're happy where they are. They fulfill, they fulfill their function to community at this time. And they're happy. They have a fulfilled life. And they do it as if they do it for Christ. The same with you and, you and me. But how can I discover my function? Spiritual impartation. That's why Dr. Frost and team is going around the country. That's why they've just been the weekend past. They've been in Durban. If you were in the Durban area the weekend past and you did not make an effort to get to the meeting, to have the impartation, to receive the impartation, you missed out on a part of how discovering your function. Whenever I have the opportunity, I will be first in line to go for spiritual impartation. I had many spiritual impartations in my life before. And I, I can see that I will have many going in future. Because whenever I have the opportunity. But you know what? That's the problem. I have to do something. Some people just don't want to do something. Can we stir you in your spirit that you will stir your body into action next time? that you have an opportunity for a spiritual impartation and be willing to make the effort. Romans 1.11 For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts so that you may be established. Fellow believer, brother, sister, a spiritual gift imparted so that you may be established. For the bigger good of whom? First and foremost, for you. But not for you. Because you are part of the body. A gift, a spiritual gift imparted to you. For the bigger body. But for you, so that you can be fulfilled and establish your function. 1 Timothy 4, 14. Do not neglect the gifts that is in you. Which was given to you by prophecy. With the laying on of hands. Of the eldership you know sometimes you get a, a prophetic word and it just jowls with you and you you run with it and you see people run and they just want to jowl and run with this prophetic word because it was in line with what they wanted to hear but sometimes you get a prophetic word and it's so different it's so outside of your comfort zone that you just shelve it you know what that's that's a huge problem because you're missing out whenever you get a a prophetic word you have to go listen to it regularly you have to go prayerfully go revisit that you have to go and and see if the holy spirit will not will not help and assist you to get a a second a third a confirmation of that so that it starts stirring your spirit so that your level of understanding and believing of what was said will grow so that you will flow, will, will, create, will build into yourself the will to step into that function. Philippians 2 verse 13. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for His good pleasure. <laughs> I'm so excited when I read that. Because it's God who works in you both to will and to do for His good pleasure. Brother, sister, if you and I can find our gifting, if we can find our function within our gifting, it will be to the pleasure of God. I cannot stir you up more than that. But then the part that you and I have to do, 2 Timothy 1 verse 6, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gifts of, the, of God which is in you. 
through the laying on of my hands. Therefore, you and I have to make sure that we don't miss out when we have an opportunity to, for the gift to be imparted, for the laying on of hands. And we have to make sure that we do that little extra bit. We have to, if we obey God's voice, that will happen, Acts 13, 22. And when he had removed him, he raised up from them David as king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. Brother, sister, if there's not something that you would love God to say about you, isn't it? Well, he's saying it of David. But he can say it of you as well. All we have to do is we have to obey his will. We have to press in with our gifting. And we have to go and make a difference where we're at. We should not all the time see where we could have been. We should be where we're at. We should be in our function with the gifting that we have, where we're at. Genesis 22, 2 to 3. And he said, take now your son. That's now Abraham. Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Abraham, his future, the gift that God gave him, the promise of his future, he have to go and offer now. If God tells you that today, will you be willing to go and do that? So Abraham arose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had, had told him. Are you and I at the place where we will listen at the same level that Abraham has listened? But you know what? It wasn't he one day woke up and heard that. He spent time fulfilling his function. Being in his gifting. That's why when God spoke to him, you could hear. Each one has a gift. And it is needed in the body of Christ. That's why we need home fellowships. That's why we need to release you into home fellowships. Because the home fellowship is a place where you can go and do all this. Where you can go and show your gifting. Where you can go find your function. 1 Corinthians 7.7 7, For I wish that all men were even... As, my, as I myself, but each one has its own gift from God, one in this manner and another in that. Can you hear that we need one another in our own fellowship? You cannot afford not to be part of our own fellowship because you're going to take away giftings and a person to do a function in that home fellowship if you're not pitching up. 1 Corinthians 12 8. But now God has set the, to set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. Ephesians 3, 7 Of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. Can you see? It's all scripture showing us that we have a function and God will give us the, the power to go and do and work. 1 Peter 4, 10 As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold, manifold grace of God. Gifts differ. And you and I have a different gift. And the people around you will lose out on your gifting if you're not there. So, you are going to help responsible for the gifts that you, that you have. Are you willing to go and stand and say, let me give account? 1 Peter 4.10 As each one has received the gift, minister to one another. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God, you have a steward of the gift. You are, sorry, you are a steward of the gift that God has given you. We must all do our share, Ephesians 4, 16. From whom the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Brothers and sisters, I trust that you heard me tonight. You must constantly stir up your gift. And you, you constantly stir up your gift by actually go and living out your gift in the body. Second, 2 Timothy 1.6 Therefore I remind you 
to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. That's why we should, whenever there's an opportunity for the laying on of hands, we should queue. And we should go stand in the queue again. And we should go stand in the queue again. Because you cannot have this enough time. Go read the scriptures. Because it will help you to step into your function. Every one of us want to be in our function. We are part of the body. And if we do not all operate, the body will be dysfunctional. Lord, we come and say thank you for teaching that Dr. Frost has gone and thought about and actually put to paper for us to go and to just see that you love us and that you've given us the gifts to go into our function. Holy Spirit, help us, guide us as we meditate this word, each one of us to find our giftings, to find our function, so that we can be part of the body and make this body whole. In Jesus' name, amen. Absolute privilege um, sharing with you and um, for you to be on this call. Have a blessed evening.